So this week, um, you know, Futurum Group uh, and our intelligence team, we did a we did a build of the AI GPU market and the ASIC market. Um, you know, we looked at a few specific things when it came to that. We looked at, you know, we, we really did a, a teardown of 2022, 23 history, every SKU, everything we could pull from public data, went through the process of the same for cloud instances and XPU sales. Um, and that's sell in. So that's numbers that we actually know shipped in. Um, and that's stuff that we could publicly find available. Uh, very interesting sort of exercise pattern. There's two things I kind of want to talk about here that came out of these numbers. One is trying to reconcile the XPU market from what we know from Broadcom versus what I'm seeing from shipments that are going into these cloud providers. Um, and then the second thing that was really interesting, Pat, is just how the how far apart the market sizing can be depending on the exercise. You know, our team, uh, we put a 30% CAGR on the GPU market, Pat. It was about 38 billion, 36 billion this year, rising to 2028 on GPUs at about 138 billion. Um, you know, we're hearing from Lisa Sue and others, they're talking about a $400 billion AI ASIC and um, GPU market. Now, again, how are they describing that in terms of networking and systems? Is it all in? Is it the whole thing? Or are they literally just talking chips? Because if that's the case, there's a pretty massive reconciliation um, between where we landed and where they landed. Um, I will say up front, um, I think we were conservative on yeah. our number. I think 30% is a very conservative growth rate. Um, I think the challenge is, Pat, is, you know, you heard me talking about NVIDIA is the sell, uh, the sales of this pressure on the CapEx side versus at what point does the market put pressure back on all those making massive CapEx investments now to start realizing revenue? And then how much does that annual cycle, that pressure and annual cycle create an unsustainable growth if we don't find a way to start selling out all this stuff into applications and workloads? Um, and when does all that stuff happen? So, you know, um, you know, the take was, Pat, we had 92% of the GPUs in, in 23 sitting with NVIDIA. Um, I've seen numbers anywhere uh, for data center between about 88%. I think I saw a petty research number come out. I've heard numbers as high as 95 and 96, um, depending on exactly where, where everything lands. But, you know, I guess, I'll, I'll, you know, rather than, you know, making this a big readout, because I'll, I'll share the link to what we've, we published, Pat, um, I'm interested in your take, you know, like, I feel like we're conservative. Um, I feel like Lisa and the, the 400 billion has been very aggressive. Where, do you, where does your head land on the kind of where this market's going? Yeah, so Dan, it's interesting. Uh, I play both sides um, uh, of the fence here. You know, I was a vendor for many years and I would work with companies like yours to, to get uh, data forecasts. And then what we would do is create what I, I like to call a fusion model. Uh, which is we're putting, and typically uh, insiders at a company actually know this better than the data data providers, but they also have the ability to, to do what I, I like to call bending the curve, which is um, it's one thing to say, okay, based on all these data points, this is the size uh, of the market. But if you're one of the two or three leaders who is actually making this stuff happen, you know what your roadmap is. You have kind of an idea of what your competitors are, and therefore you can extrapolate that out in terms of the size of the market, but also the market share that uh, uh, that 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 you uh, want to take. And you know, I, I'd like to invoke uh, something that Michael Dell had said uh, years ago uh, in a conversation. Uh, that 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 we were having publicly uh, with the size of of the IoT market in the next ten years, and you know once you know, once you start getting into the hundreds of billions and, and trillions, uh, his response was, "Yeah, it's a big market. We, we all agree, uh, and the numbers, uh, you know, are, are large, right? So, therefore, going after that market long term is a uh, is a uh, is a smart thing." Uh, I think that the numbers will get more interesting as NVIDIA gets more competition, right? I mean, you know, I mean, I don't know, uh, Red Bull, you know, winning everything all the time just got to be uh, a complete uh, snoozer. And, you know, you've got McLaren coming in. I mean, Mercedes won a few races. Now, like, everybody's, like, competition is back. And, you know, long term, you never have one player just dominating everything. I think the 
uh, the best case today of total domination uh, from a profit standpoint is probably Apple. Even though Apple only has about a third of the overall global market for smartphones, uh, they're taking most of the profit pool. Uh, and then Samsung and the other Android uh, providers are are kind of picking the scraps for profit. Now, great news about you know companies like Samsung is they're vertically integrated and they make you know make most all of the content inside of their devices, so they are making mar <coughs> margin uh, on that too. But um, what I'm really excited about is the future of of ASICs versus GPUs. That's what I am most uh, excited about. And you know, I'm hoping Dan, in in some of your future reports, right, you can tease out uh, companies like Grok. You can tease out Cerebrus. Yeah. Uh, you can tease out Untether, uh, Untether AI, and the long list of companies who do. Uh, AI chips. And another interesting uh, one that I hope you do is going to be on networking, right? And and whether it's scale up, uh, scale out type of networking technologies, the network is, is and, and correlated chips uh, is uh, arguably as important uh, today as it's a super element uh, to uh, throttling uh, training time and inference uh, latency. Yeah. And, I, and to give you a little tease there, I actually have, uh, you know, I had some estimates on 2023 revenue. Cerebrus, I had about a uh, 170 million. Okay. Graph core 152, Grok at 60. These were our estimates. It's all in the, in the data. Do the reports. Oh, it is in there. That's great. Yeah, it yeah, is I don't, uh, I don't have a license to the data, Dan. So I haven't had the ability to uh, go out there. I was just reading it on uh, the multiple yeah. CNBC uh, appearances that your data had. Yeah. You. Well, you know, the, one of the big challenges I'm having with this though, is the public data of what's kind of selling in. There's a lot of sort of mystery too, like what's getting, what Meta's buying. There's no way to really like, and they're one of the biggest consumers, for instance, of XB, XBU. And, and so we're looking at cloud instances and what we know from, you know, we're looking at the build out of shipments from Intel, Gaudi and others, and these, these small names that you mentioned, the smaller names you mentioned, and that stuff I can really track. What I'm having a harder time tracking is how many XPUs went into Meta, how many XPUs um, did T sorry TPUs for instance did Google buy for its own use? Like I can track the cloud instances that it's selling out to customers, and they have the lion's share of instance use right now. So XPUs being used by cloud providers, um, they have the vast majority, and then of course AWS came in second right now with Inferentia. Um, on the other end of things, though, like the stuff that's being used inside, like Broadcom's pretty masked in terms of how those shipments look. So while you talked about, I think the market for XP is much bigger than what we can size. So that's where I think a lot of growth comes in is because there is a big amount being shipped into these custom, uh, these hyperscalers that don't resell, you know, so you're, you know, we're talking about the ones that are using it for their own use. Yeah. And then of course, you know, it is just still early, kind of how AI is defined, meaning there is still kind of a lot of debate on like what, like, we were trying to track CPU instances that are dedicated for AI use. Well, we know a ton of CPUs are used for multi purpose, their general yeah. purpose, and they use some AI. And so those aren't being counted. But like even in just the short period of time that Grace Hopper was shipping in 23, because you know, the not the, the first version of it, I mean, the most dedicated compute cores, even though you have all the Intel going with the H H series as head node, you're still seeing the most uh Grace, the Grace cores being the highest core count so yeah. it's really interesting to kind of see how this goes but like i said the way cpu gpus work together there is a lot of cpu not in the count because it's being used for other purposes um which means intel's role is bigger than maybe it's portrayed in ai right now um and so is amd by the way from epic because epic had a big part too with as you know in a number of different configurations with nvidia gpus and others so all that, Pat, it's super interesting stuff. I'll drop the link. Uh, this has driven a ton of interest, very exciting uh, times. And we will, you know, Pat, I think your point about networking, you very interesting to do a um, a sort of, what did you call it? Like open uh, open ultra ethernet versus- uh, Yeah, you know, ethernet, oh, open ultra, yeah, uh, NV link, right? I mean, there's 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 so many the elements of the networking rack. today. In yeah. the rack, out of the rack, and what are people using? I think there's a big, big op to really dig, deeper 
on that particular thing. 